Okay, um, I'd like to give a quick demonstration on uh, sort of the solution I've, I've figured out to do spiral stairs. Um, as many of you are probably aware that if you draw in a spiral stair, um, it's unable to wrap around itself, which is something that most uh, spiral stairs do. So I've sort of devised a method of modeling a spiral stair a little bit easier. So I'm going to try and walk through that. Uh, first, I'm going to show you the pieces. Uh, that I've used to model this. Um, so it's not as simple as uh, you know place a stair by clicking and dragging and there's my stair. Uh, the spiral stair is never going to work that way. Uh, the first thing I did was I checked the um, sort of the requirements for a spiral stair um, by code. The, the uh, treads have to be 30 degrees, risers can be no more than nine and a half inches, uh, the tread um, Depth, minimum depth has to be, I want to say it's like 12 inches or 10 inches. I set it to 10 inches. Um, all of that gets thrown off because we're doing a winder stair. So the first thing is to be balanced here, making sure that it has a single origin point as it's wrapping around the corner. All of that's pretty straightforward. Um, typically, I turn off all of the uh, riser minimum, maximum. Um, walking line offset can be checked. Um, that's basically the depth at that walking line offset. Um, a uh, spiral stair by code, most codes are going to require it to be a minimum of 60 inch total diameter. Um, and I think that the center post has to be um, a 4 inch diameter, I believe, is what that post is supposed to be. Um, and I've used a column for that. I actually pieced together two separate stairs, um, which is not as bad as it seems. Uh, I use one railing for the uh, basically the stringer that runs up. I use uh, other railings for the actual handrails. Um, piecing those together as separate railings just makes it a lot easier um, to pull it together after the fact um, uh, than to try and make that one railing kind of run all the way around and get the railing design and everything to look the way you want. Uh, and then I have a slab for the landing here. Um, the other thing that was really cool about ARCHICAD as I was piecing all this together as separate pieces, uh, if I go into my model view options and say show headroom, uh, and a spiral stair is required to have a six foot six headroom. So I can verify that my uh, one inch steel or three quarter inch steel or whatever plate clears my headroom all the way across uh, that stair. And you can actually adjust that design accordingly for that landing to work with whatever headroom requirement you have. Um, so putting this together, let's go ahead and, and take a look at the floor plan. Um, I actually have a file available in my online store with all of these stairs, uh, stair options that you can um, just pick one, copy and paste it into your file. Uh, they're all tied to the floor to floor height, so they should adjust for whatever your, your floor plan design is. Um, but this stair in particular, let's take a look at what we did here. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is place this column. I'm just going to drag a copy of this column off to the side. Uh, and a lot of this stuff we can do in 3D directly. So first thing I'm going to do is I drop that stair and I'm going to just draw it as a straight stair to start with. Um, so there's my stair and I'm going to snap it to right there and then if I start to curve this around it's going to probably give me a bit of grief trying to make this work but with a little bit of patience you can get it to snap to that column. So there's one of my stairs, uh, and this is where I've left it. So this stair, just to give you a little bit of an overview here, uh, the way I set this up is I took my floor to floor height, uh, well, let's set this at zero, um, and set this at negative five. Um, and you could even just say not linked, and it's a five foot stair, that's fine too. Uh, basically, whatever our floor-to-floor -floor height is, we want that stair to be half of that. So there's a little bit of manual update. If you updated the the floor-to-floor -floor height, you'd have to come back in here and adjust this so that this number was half of that total height. So that if it was linked to that second floor at zero, um, it would be 10 feet. But I'm dropping that down to negative 5, so that the total stair height is half. Uh, from here, you can check the number of risers or the total height. Uh, I know by code I can't be 10 inches on the riser, so I'm going to go to whatever the maximum riser is. makes it easiest to make the clearance work. Um, on this one, I want it to actually end with a tread. Uh, works really well for the first piece. Uh, so let's go ahead and say OK on that, and we will check this out in 3D now. Uh, the other thing that you can do just to verify that all of this is working out 
is that center column really is super, super valuable. You can set the height of that column to the second floor to be uh, zero to the second floor height. So now I know if my stair ends at that top of column, I've reached my second floor height. So it gives me sort of a visual guide. You can obviously extend it up to the railing height after the fact, um, but isolating out that four inch column, uh, bear with it for a second here, um, that four inch column and the stair uh, are now isolated out. So I have uh, finishes on a tread here. What I'm going to do is actually copy, drag a copy of the stair up to here. Uh, actually, that's backwards. I want the center piece on that piece. So uh, now when I rotate this around, because it's an identical stair, um, it should, in theory, play nicely and wrap around the column until I'm all the way at the top of my floor floor height. Um, and I can tell here that my six foot six clearance from the lower stair to that upper stair is being met because I have my headroom shown. Uh, I'm clearing all the way up by that stair design. Um, now if I come back into the model view options, let's just turn those off for clarity. So uh, here I've got that much figured out. Uh, for the railing, what I've done, uh, and again, let's just pull this whole thing up so I can kind of use this as a graphics favorite. That's why I built this file actually was uh, for the use of graphic favorites on these. Um, for this one, I probably want it to end on a riser so that I can actually build that landing tread out in a way that makes sense. Um, right, so it's not adding extra landing because that's not big enough for landing. Um, and it's really tedious to try and modify a single tread. Um, so in this one, I'm going to say ends with a riser. And that's fine. My total stair height is still to here. Um, I just don't have that extra extra tread here. Um, if I ended in a landing, I'd have to start with a uh, sorry, uh, ended with a tread. I'd have to start with a tread on the next one. This this just makes it a little bit easier, quicker. Um, so here I've got this railing, and I use a railing, not a stair, not a beam. Uh, the railing tool, if you set it up correctly, uh, and this is uh, quite literally, it's just a rail. That rail is a steel profile. It's a two inch by whatever height, 11 and a quarter. Um, you could actually use a, a custom profile. Um, if your profile manager has a complex profile available for this particular part, um, you would use, uh, let's see, this profile rail. Uh, here I just wanted tube steel and you can make it whatever you wanted. You could say it was you know 9.5 inches or whatever. Um, on this I just said 11 inches or 11 and a quarter inches is fine. Uh, the wall thickness, that could be again whatever you want. Not 14, um, one quarter, one quarter inch. Um, so whatever the the dimensions of that steel are, uh, you don't have to have a custom profile to use uh, nominal steel as long as you know what the dimensions are. There's no fixings, there's no uh, no settings, no distribution. It's just a really simple profile. Uh, the one thing is, I want to make sure that my ends are uh, set to vertical for the rail. Uh, this is edit settings for this. Uh, seems to get ignored or forgotten about the fact that um, that setting is there. So you might be sitting here going, well, I said that that's vertical and it's still not setting up as vertical. I've done that before, scratching my head. Um, it's because I'm not editing the rail, I'm editing the top rail. So switch this to rail because, again, that's what we set this as. That's a rail. I need to make sure that the ends for my rail are set to vertical um, and that they're not flattening out at the bottom of the top. Um, I don't need posts, I don't need connections. My connections, uh, all of these things can zero out. It doesn't really matter because by the time we're done, it's gonna be fine. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and say okay on this. And uh, you can either start at the top or the bottom of the riser. You just have to be consistent where you're clicking. So I don't wanna click at the top here and the bottom here. I wanna click at the top and the top. Um, and we can kind of jump around as long as we're consistent. So going top to top here, and notice that I'm not worrying about the curve right now. I'm just trying to wrap this around so it's going from top to top every three, four, five, whatever uh, treads. So top rail, up top tread, and top tread. And um, I'm going to give it, kick it over maybe five inches and then come over a foot for my, my landing. And we'll just say that that is, is our our stringer. Uh, now notice it's all chopped up and ugly, uh, but if I grab 
this edge right here, and on the pet palette, define this as curved. Uh, that'll start to kind of clean up and heal. Um, when these things curve around at that slope, uh, for whatever reason, the, the railing tool just knows that that's how that's got to come together. And it doesn't really matter how many you go up or whether you're going up consistently because the angle that it's going up and wrapping around is consistent. Um, and I can snap to any one of these. The radius is the same for all of these. Um, so it's going to start to heal itself up as this goes around. Um, now I could technically add the railing and stuff that I had over here to this and it would be fine. Um, but I found that putting those in as separate rails uh, really works better. Um, I also sort of preset the reference line position for this to be at the top inside. That's why it uh, connected perfectly there. This is why having favorites or graphic favorites um, or even a file to copy and paste from is, is a better solution than trying to troubleshoot this and resolve it every time. Because it's, uh, it's a pain even for me to figure out what the offset here needs to be to get that to work and what the rail segment and railing settings and all of that, trying to get that all to work out. Uh, but because I was able to eye drop one that I already knew worked and then just drop it in, uh, even if the stair design was completely different, um, I know that dropping this in and maybe this is uh, some kind of crazy glue lamb wood uh, um, spiral stair. Uh, the solution for that, making that a wood stringer, is really as simple as just coming in here and saying uh, either change the material or do a surface override on this. Let's go wood structural, right? And now I've got a, a glue lamb timber holding the outside of the stair up. Um, so it's a lot quicker to just start with something that's close, drop it in, and make the one or two changes that you need rather than changing 30 or 40 or 50 things every time you need to make a stair. Um, I think what I've found with the stair tool recently is that uh, it's a great tool as long as you don't expect it to be uh, a one element solution. As long as you're willing to use it uh, like you would the wall tool or the beam tool or the column tool or the roof tool, where uh, you're never going to roof your entire project with a single roof element. Um, so don't expect to model an entire stair with a single stair element. Uh, be willing and open to piecing this together with separate elements. Uh, anyway, so for the railing now, what I can do is just drag a copy of this where it's at and then modify it. So now I have two railings overlapping each other. Um, and I know that this railing has the right shape. I'm going to just bleed this out of here, add in a top rail, um, add in balusters. Uh, for some reason it likes to duplicate those. Um, and then the other part of this is making sure that uh, your post matches your balusters. So like here, my post, let's just use the built-in post. And uh, yeah, let's do one inch rails, five inches apart, pattern max, five inches. Um, but every time there's a node, there's going to be a, a 10 inch gap. So I need a one inch by one inch post wherever there's a node. So I'm going to add a post as well that's set to one inch by one inch and say OK. And there's my handrail. Uh, obviously a little bit more tinkering, get the, the actual railing. Um, oh, this was another fun one uh, that I found out, uh, this top rail here. So let's check that out. Uh, so the top rail, first of all, let's set that to be something a little bit more interesting. So we'll go to wood profile rail, um, no fixings needed. So this is the top rail. So when I go to ends and set that to top rail, um, I want that to slope down just normal. Um, we don't need a return on it anywhere. So we're gonna zero all of that out, change that to straight uh, so that we don't have this weird jog fishtailing into our model. Um, and that, that's effective for the top and the bottom. So now when we say OK, that's going to tuck in under there and look a lot nicer, a lot cleaner. Um, obviously, the landing, you can kind of figure that out. That's just a simple slab. Uh, what I did with that um, was if we go back to um, our model view option here, and let's just go ahead and turn that headroom back on. Um, what I did for that is uh, literally just drew a slab in here. So let's grab our slab, um, set it at this angle, right? So it's coming across there and stretch it over wherever it needs to go. Um, and then here it was pretty simple. Just pull this in until it clears that orange line. Pull this out until 
it's right up against that orange line. Uh, and it might be easiest to pull it until it just intersects and then back it off just a little bit. Uh, you can also check that angle and floor plan and get it to something that's a little bit more user friendly and precise. Um, and then you can also use the pet palette and just say we're going to add a little landing extension here. Um, obviously brush up, let's try that again, brush up that rail and that curb so that it, it plays well with the stair landing uh, and all comes together. Uh, obviously you want to check your codes, uh, check your um, all your design requirements. Um, a lot of these come as stair kits. Um, you know, if you can check the shop drawings for the stair kit, you can model it more precisely to those documents. Um, I think one of the things that might be difficult is trying to figure out the exact angle of these treads. Um, there just isn't great options for uh, defining that exact angle for that radius and saying that the treads start and stop here. Uh, at some point, as long as the stair starts in the right spot, ends in the right spot, your head clearance is met, um, we have to say, if we're using the stair tool, that good enough has got to be good enough. Um, but you could certainly spend more time getting more accurate, more precise, dialing it in. Uh, this is the solution that I've found for modeling spiral stairs uh, that are A, code compliant, B, look realistic, uh, and um, actually are an asset to the model rather than just something that we clunk into place. Hope you can use this tip to help build your spiral stairs.